uh, already seen the uh, cover the content uh, before getting into this call. So I assume everyone already took a look at the, 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 the course, uh, specifically this module, the Azure Fundamentals. So that's what we're going to, to cover today. Um, this is, of course, one hour. Uh, we're going to uh, review the most important concept. If you want to go more in detail, uh, you have that material online. OK, uh, also at the end, I'm going to share some resources. So if you want to learn even more, um, some recommended pages that that, uh, that I have uh, for learning. So let's start from the beginning, right to the very basics. Um, another thing that I wanted to comment is. Uh, before joining Microsoft, I was working in cybersecurity, but not much uh, security in the cloud. So I had to learn it from the beginning. So five years ago, I was actually doing course like this. Um, and now I'm working as a, as a cloud solutions architect in Azure. Um, so it's totally possible to uh, to enter a company and learn from the, 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 the very uh, basics. OK, so um, what is cloud computing? So cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient on demand uh, network access to a shared pool of computer computing resources like network servers, storage and applications. So to explain it in single words, um, what we have before or right now in front of you, you have a computer, maybe a server there that is connected to a, a network. Maybe you have a router there in the room. Well, imagine all these, but in a remote physical location owned by Microsoft and you access that through the Internet. OK, um, so that's basically the cloud. Uh, what is Azure? So Azure is the cloud of Microsoft. Azure is a cloud computing platform that provides a wide range of services and tools. Um, we have, I think, around 200 services to help organizations build, test, deploy, and manage their applications and their services. It is built on a highly scalable and reliable global infrastructure. OK, so physically Microsoft uh, owns all, all these um, uh, computing resources and you access to them. OK, um, as I said before, uh, Azure provides a wide range of key features like uh, virtual machines, storage, uh, data storage uh, services, databases, uh, networking, analytics, and artificial intelligence services that helps organizations to build and manage the applications and services more efficiently. Some benefits on, on having the uh, access to a cloud. So I should provide all these uh, uh, services. Um, it's easy to scale because within seconds, imagine you can click a, a, a virtual machine, uh, which is not the same as if you physically need to do it. OK, um, so within seconds, you can if you need 10 new machines, you have it. OK, so it's, it's uh, easy to scale reliability because of Microsoft uh, it feels a lot of compliance. Uh, it's compliant with a lot of standards, so it, it's reliable. It has all the redundancy that it's needed to provide the services 24-7. Uh, uh, secure uh, also, which is the area that I focus. So also we have a lot of built-in um, uh, security features. Flexibility, uh, because again, Within seconds, you can create within a, a few clicks, you can create a new machine and delete it if you don't need it. OK, which is not the same if you have that physical uh, resource. And also it's cost effective um, because it helps organizations to achieve their business goals more effectively. OK, um, so to summarize there on the left, you have the main benefit. A hybrid also because you can connect them with your resources. For example, um, a, a company has uh, servers in their office and they can connect to Azure to the cloud uh, with on premises. So you can have resources in the, the both environments. OK. So uh, we know it's in the cloud. Um, but of course, that doesn't mean that it magically exists. Uh, it is physically somewhere. OK, 
Um, so, of course, um, maybe you're not gonna, uh, uh, um, you're not gonna uh, see the physical uh, infrastructure that my, uh, Microsoft has, but you needed to understand how it is done to understand how we can create our storage, our services later. So managing that physical infrastructure is a critical part of any IT operation. In that module uh, that you cover in the course, you explore how to manage the server storage and network the infrastructure in Azure. One concept that you saw there is a region. So a region is a geographical area on the planet that contains at least one, but potentially multiple data centers that are nearby and networking together with a low latency network. Uh, if I'm correct, for example, there is a, a data center uh, of Azure here in Ireland where I'm based. Okay, so region, it's a, a place where one of multiple data centers. Another important concept to understand is availability zones. They are physically separated data centers within an Azure region. Each availability zone is made up of one or more data centers. They have independent power, pooling, and network infrastructure. Um, why they have independent power and cooling, for example? Because they are designed uh, so that if one zone experiences an outage, then uh, a regional service capacity, um, then uh, another one will support uh, the, the, the services. Okay, so it's basically in case something wrong happens, you have a replacement. Okay, that's why we call it availability zones. Um, how you're going to see this in the in the portal? For example, when you create a, any resource, one of the first thing that you need to choose, uh, be, uh, besides the the name of a resource, is the um, the, the the location. Okay, where that is going to be physically. Okay. So, uh, how are things organized uh, in, in in Azure in the cloud when you access the the portal? So, this is the main hierarchy, and it's really it's an elemental thing to learn because uh, it's terminology that we're going to use a lot. Okay, so we will have four things that are really important: resources, resource groups subscriptions and management groups. OK, um, so a resource, as it says there, is an item that is available through Azure. It could be a virtual machine, a storage account, a web app, a database, a virtual network. Those are type of resources. OK, there we're going to see some examples in the next slides. But remember, all of these things, we call them resources in Azure. They are going to be grouped inside what we call resource groups, OK? Uh, so a resource group is a container that holds related uh, resources in Azure. Um, there could be different criteria. For example, uh, you could say I create a resource group for all my virtual machines, on another resource group for all my web apps, or maybe uh, you have another criteria to say all the um, resources that belongs to certain application even um, if it's a database or the machine, they're going to be in the same resource group. Sorry, please remember to be a, a, on mute unless you, you want to ask a question, OK? Thank you. So we have resources inside resource groups, and those resource groups will be inside subscriptions, OK? A subscription is really important to understand because it's mandatory to have when uh, if you want to use Azure, OK, that's the first thing you create. You create an account and then you create a subscription and a subscription is going to contain the resource group that contains your resources. Um, so basically the minimum, the, the basic unit uh, also for billing that you're going to use in Azure. OK, uh, so we have the subscriptions and then those three are mandatory subscription resource groups and resources. And then optionally, you can have a higher level called management groups. Uh, the management groups are basically um, imagining 
some big company will have a lot of subscriptions. Sometimes they could be like hundreds of them and they want to group them together. So they have this um, another option to go higher, which is called management group. Maybe some customers usually have, if they are a worldwide company, they will have a management group for Europe and a management group for uh, all the resources in Americas. Okay. So let's review what type of resources. Again, there are going to be hundreds of type of resources. We're going to cover the most basic ones. Uh, first, we have the compute resources. Again, there are a few in the in the course there uh, that you completed. Uh, they focus on these four: Azure Virtual Machines, which is a service where you deploy and manage a virtual machine inside an Azure Virtual Network. So imagine like a machine that you have in front of you right now, that will be in the cloud. Uh, a container, uh, which is actually a new say new concept, uh, they are virtualization environments. You can run multiple containers on a single physical or virtual host. And the advantage with that is that you don't need to worry about certain settings, like for example, the operating systems, because you let a, a Azure to handle that for you. Okay. Then we have a uh, Azure functions which is another uh, serverless solution designed for reducing the need for infrastructure. So even handling more of the responsibility to Azure and less for you to configure, okay? Uh, you can use it, uh, use Azure functions to automate certain tasks. For example, every time there is a security incident, automatically send an email to you. You can do that with Azure functions. And if you want to create a, a, a web app, you have a service called Azure App Service. It's a managed service for hosting web applications, mobile applications, RESTful APIs, or automated business processes. Okay. So uh, another type of resource is something uh, that is really fundamental to create. It's one of the first things that you're going to create is networking resources okay so maybe you are familiar with when that happens in a, an office that you have a network maybe a sub network and some devices like the routers the switch well now all of that infrastructure is in the cloud so we're going to call it virtual network virtual subnet okay um, this is again a building block um, for um, for Azure because one of the most of the customer first thing that you try is um, a create a virtual machine, and with that you need to create how it's going to be connected to internet or to other resources, and for that you need to configure a virtual network. Okay, so. Um, in Azure, you have all the services to create a virtual network subnet. Uh, um, assign the, the range of IP addresses that uh, for that uh, virtual network. Also, you have more advanced features like um, uh, features um, to communicate with on-premises. On-premises will be resources that you have in a physical office. Uh, filtering the network traffic, maybe for security purposes, you want to filter some network traffic or um, you want to filter, for example, some customers want their employees not to access, uh, let's say, YouTube, so they can uh, configure that in, in, in Azure to filter that traffic, uh, routing services, and also integration with other servers, for example, a, a firewall also as well. Um, another type of important type of resource is uh, storage. Storing data efficiently and effectively is really important as well. Azure Storage offers highly available, massive, scalable, durable, and secure storage for a variety of data objects in the cloud. So depending what is your use case, uh, how you're trying to save data and what data you're trying to save, you're going to have different options. These are the most popular ones. Azure Blobs, uh, which is a scalable object that uh, they use to store data and by um, text and binary data. 
sorry, uh, Azure Files. It's a managed file shares for cloud or on-premises deployment. Uh, Queues Storage. It's a messaging store for reliable messaging between applications components. Uh, we also have Azure Tables, uh, which is a non-SQL uh, store for schemeless storage for unstructured data. Uh, also, another one that I didn't add there in the slide, but is Managed Disk, so block-level storage volumes for Azure VMs, so a disk for a virtual machine, basically. Um, so as, as you can see, Azure provides a variety of storage uh, tools and services to determine which Azure technology is best suited for your scenario. You will have to review your prerequisites, what type of data you're storing. Um, if you go to the Microsoft documentation, you find this um, decisions tree that based on it provides some questions and depending on your answer, it gives you the best option for you to use. Another very important thing is who's going to have access to the portal and to our resources. OK, so access management for cloud resources is a critical. I would say is the first line of defense. Um, I'm a security person. I'm a security engineer, so of course I worry about this a lot. Um, uh, every time I talk about these things, I have in mind about avoiding security incidents, right? So this is a very important thing to configure. Before we see what Azure services are available, let's see Ryu. Sorry, remember to, to unmute yourself, please. Or I don't know if there's any questions. Okay. Um, so two concepts to have in mind and, and remember is authentication and authorization. So authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or device. Uh, it is critical component of any IT operation and is used to manage the access to our resources, right? And authorization is the process of granting or denying access, uh, access of a user or device. So basically it's the, the process of verifying who I am and then what I have permissions to do. OK. So to manage all that, um, one of the most important services that we have in Microsoft is a Microsoft Entra ID. Probably you know it because uh, uh, for the old name, which was Azure Active Directory or Azure ID. This is an integrated cloud identity and access solution. So all the things regarding roles uh, and uh, who has the permission to access to what, passwords uh, and things like that, you manage it from this tool. OK, this is a leader in the market for managing uh, directories, enabling access to the applications and protecting the identities as well. Um, it has a few. Uh, um, uh, uh, functions, uh, for example, single sign on, you know, when um, um, single sign on, and it's a feature that enables you to remember only one username and one password to access multiple applications. You know, sometimes when you access a uh, download an application on the phone and you log in with your Microsoft account um, or your Google account, well, that will be a single sign on if you use that account later, um, this, the same username and password. Uh, application management, so to see this amount of users have access to these applications and they can only perform these actions. OK. Um, and uh, all around security, uh, if there is a security issue, for example, if a password was compromised for a user, you will be have uh, you will have the, the, the functionalities here to um, uh, trigger an investigation and preventing this to happen again in the future from this tool. Um, so one another thing that is really important and it's related to what we just covered is role based access control or RBAC. Uh, you're going to see it here in the like that in the documentation. RBAC uh, is basically a model that we use to um, assign roles, permissions, 
uh, to users and to group of users. Okay. Um, the idea in Azure is to provide users only permissions to do the things that they need for performing the job and not more than that. So we don't want you to have the approach of, okay, I let all the users to do anything, okay? Because uh, that's not very secure. So if you're gonna have a person that is gonna manage, um, for example, in the company, uh, that is gonna match, manage the databases, okay, they only have permissions to create databases and manage the databases, but they don't have access to other tools like, for example, virtual machines. OK, so uh, that's what the role based access control mean. Very granular, what role you're going to uh, assign. And that process is um, summarized in this slide. You first need to say to who you are uh, assigning these permissions. So what I call a security principle. It could be a user or a group of users. Right, so let's, let's say to the marketing group. Um, I'm going to do a role as a definition. So, for example, I'm going to give them a, the set of permissions is inside what we call a role. We have built in roles, or you can create your own. For example, we have owner, owner of a subscription of a resource, they can do whatever. Or reader, they can only read the information but not make changes. Okay. So, you select who you're going to send it to, the role definition, so the set of permissions. And then the scope. If you remember those four parts of this, the, the structure of the hierarchy, management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and resource, you can assign the roles at any scope in that hierarchy. For example, I can make user one the owner of the whole subscription, and user number two the owner, but only for this resource group. OK, so it's owner permissions, but at different uh, levels, different scopes. OK, all of that is part of the role based access control. Then going a little bit deeper, uh, we have a, a feature, uh, one of the most important feature in, in, in Azure AD, which is conditional access. This is more related with security, OK? <clears throat> This uh, tool uh, to make it easy to understand. It studies certain conditions of your login. And if there's something weird. Um, it will provide an alert or you can do certain actions. For example. The tool can detect if you're always connecting login to the application from Finland. If there is a login from Australia, it will say, hey, let, let something there is something I'm familiar with with this. Uh, let's let's double check what we do. We, we should do. OK, um, that could happen, for example, if you go on holidays, you're always connecting from one place and go from the other. Uh, it, the tool will realize that. Based on those conditions, um, it will perform different actions for you to access to the tool. Maybe it will ask you for a, a multi-factor authentication type of authentication if you're connecting from another place in the world that you are not used to. Okay. Um, Azure Arc. What is Azure Arc? So um, we have been mentioning there a few resources that we can see in, in Azure. So storage accounts, virtual machines, virtual networks, but most of my customers, most of companies right now, they still have an office and they have physical resources there. OK, so physical machines uh, in, an, in an office, maybe a, a set of ser uh, databases and servers. And they want to. Uh, first connect that to Azure, so they have resources in Azure and resources on premises. There are ways to connect it. But now um, this is going a step further, OK, and saying I don't want to be managing two environments. OK, I want to manage everything from one single place because imagining companies may have thousands of servers or databases. 
and having two places sometimes to look at is too much. So they want a centralized view of everything. This is what Azure Arc provides. Azure Arc is a service that uh, you can use it in, for example, databases, containers, or servers that you have on premises, so physically in the office, let's say. You can onboard those to Azure. That means that that resource, that is a physical resource in your office, after you onboard it with Azure Arc, you will be able to see it from the Azure Arc portal as if it were an Azure resource. Okay, um, so from the portal, I'm going to see machine one from the office. And from there, I can see if there's any out, uh, outdated operating systems, any any vulnerability, any um, policy that I need to apply, any change, anything that I want to, to do an administrative task in, in that resource that it's outside of Azure. Thanks to Azure Arc, I can I can see it from the Azure portal and manage as if it was an a, 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 an Azure resource. Okay, um, so that's why it talks there about a unified management because when you onboard your resources, you only have one place, which is the Azure portal, to manage your those resources. Same applied if it's other clouds because uh, Azure is just one example of clouds. You have also, for example, AWS. So if you have resources th uh, there and you want to manage them from one place, you can also use Azure Arc. Okay. Okay, and another um, uh, fundamental thing and something that um, uh, companies, uh, I always recommend to start uh, taking a look from the very beginning, uh, but sometimes I forget, is governance. Governance is about meeting strategic objectives while meeting legal and regulatory um, and other uh, obligatory requirements often supported by policies. The goal is achieved both in a balanced way. So we know that the cloud, that as I said before, provides unprecedented agility and scale. Uh, without some clicks, you can create a thousand of VMs, for example. Since it's now easier, uh, it's way easier to deploy resources by different peoples across an organization, it becomes more difficult to have control over the environments and applications. Okay. Uh, so Azure provides a set of tools and services to help manage the governments, uh, governance across your organization that are fully embedded on the Azure platform to provide control over losing speed. Okay. So, for example, you need to make sure that uh, one of your customers deployed all the virtual machines only in a uh, Finland region. And you need to make sure that the user don't come and create a, a, a resource in China, for example, because it will be more expensive. And also it will be disorganized, right? So all of those set of rules is part of governance. Okay. Um, there are going to be different rules per customers. And the service that you have in Azure um, to, to help you with that is Azure Policy. With Azure Policy, you can create policies, which is a, a rule basically uh, that's, um, that uh, helps with your compliance. Okay. For example, that one, make sure that virtual machines are created in this location. Or, for example, make sure that on not expensive. A type of resource can be created by this group, things like that. That you can do with Azure Policy and then uh, get a report on what resources are compliant and which ones are not. Okay, this could be good for making sure that the cost uh, keep optimized, um, that also everything is secure. Okay, so it doesn't only help in one aspect; it's, it helps globally. Uh, another thing that is mentioned here is, is Azure compliance. So Azure has a comprehensive set of uh, compliance certifications. These are global standards, globally recognized standards like ISO. Maybe you heard about that one or HIPAA or SOC. Um, these are international standards that basically 
um, checks if uh, if a tool is safe to use and 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 follow certain uh, rules and standards. Um, Azure is compliant with that, and also the it, it has the tools, for example, Defender for Cloud, which provides an assessment of your resources and see if those resources are compliant or not with those standards. Okay. Last but not least, before going to the, the demo of the portal, is Azure Cost Management. Um, so cost management is again really critical to understand. Uh, there's always need to be a balance between um, what we are trying to do and try to do it in a least expensive way, okay? because customers, of course, they have budgets, right? And since it's so easy to create things in Azure, you also need to make sure that uh, you are um, under the budget, right? We have a tool called Azure Cost Management. What you're seeing there in the presentation is a screenshot of that tool that it gives you a, a cost analysis page where you can see how much you have spent. It shows you also a forecast. So based on what you are spending now, if you're going to reach the budget or not, uh, you can filter to create reports, for example, uh, how much you are spending on certain services or in certain resource groups. Um, you can create alerts if you're going to reach a certain budget, for example, and track your consumption okay uh, and the best part about this is a free service and it's enabled by default in the portal okay so as soon as you create an account you will have access to this tool so what we saw there it was based on the course of course we could go deeply in each of these topics uh, this is just a high level a view uh, um, about the most important uh, type of resources that, that we have. Okay, um, I will show you a quick demo now of the portal. Okay, and then we're going to have some time for Q&A. Before going to the demo, I, I want to show you this. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to share the slides. If not, I can copy these links in the, in the chat. Um, if you want to continue your learning, um, there are a lot of resources that you can use. Okay, okay. Um, I will say the most important one and the ones that is going to have uh, the true information is the Microsoft documentation. Okay, so for all those Azure services that I mentioned and all the services that Microsoft has, it has official documentation, how to enable things, what are the best practices, how each feature works, um, you can Google Microsoft documentation and the name of the, the product, or you can just click that link. There is also a page called Microsoft Learning, and there are different courses. There I put the link of the, the, the ones that is related with a certification called Azure Fundamentals, and it's probably the most, uh, um, the ones that relate the most with this course. OK, so um, in that one you can log in, track your uh, improvement uh, and it's, in some cases it has some labs. So it's it's a really good, good page. Uh, I still use it for new services that I want to learn or maybe new services that exist. Uh, I still use that page. And if you are a person, for example, that likes more video uh, uh, learning instead of reading, probably I like that uh, as well. Uh, there are a lot of events and webinars um, that Microsoft organizes. And in that link, you're going to find the ones, the upcoming ones. Sometimes also there are recordings about past ones uh, related with Azure. Okay, so I would recommend as a starting point with, with this. Uh, while I open the browser to show you a quick demo, I don't know if you have any questions so far. Oh, okay, so this is a URL, uh, portal.azure.com, that is going to take me to the Azure portal. Um, here I have a few accounts. I'm going to sign in to this one. 
um, like it explained the course you can uh, log in here and get a free access for a month with certain credit and then access I think up to a year to subscription so, so you have ways to to um, there is a question there in the chat uh, but it's about finish and I don't know finish so maybe be back and help with that one um, okay so this is the Azure portal I don't know if uh, all of you have seen it in case you haven't uh, this is the the overview page so we have here the Azure services um, a quick uh, access to these Azure services um, probably you're going to have a different list because here it's the the ones that I accessed recently okay here on the left we have the the menu that we can open to either create a resource go to this home page if we go to all services, we can see all the services in Azure, which are many, many services. Um, another thing that I will say, probably this is more an professional advice. Don't feel overwhelmed by all the services that you have if you're learning, trying to, to learn uh, Azure. Um, no one is an expert on all of these services, OK? Not even the people working at Microsoft. Um, for example, I'm part of a team. A security team, but I was I used to be part of the infra team. And um, we have an engineer that focuses on networking, another one that focuses on identity. So don't believe that to know Azure you need to learn about these 200 services. Okay. Um, you can have an overview, see maybe what is more popular, what you like the most, and focus on that one. Okay. Um, so we have the full list here, five favorites, so the ones that I use the most, the, the services. Here on the right, uh, here we have, um, well, your your account, uh, here to see information about account. Then if you have different directories of tenant, um, which is basically indicated by the, after the at, I have a, a tenant at Microsoft.com, okay. Uh, you can change. You can see there how I can change to other other uh, accounts. And here, just to see another example, we can see in the search bar. I always start from there. Um, resources. You can see, for example, virtual machines, and it will tell you a list of all your virtual machines. And when you select one, uh, usually it's the same structure for um, all the resources. First, you're going to have an overview page where you're going to have information about that resource, the type of resource, the resource group, and status, um, location, in this case, some properties. And on the left, you have all the functionalities. Okay. Again, depending on what type of resource you are seeing, if it's a data storage, for example, it will be different the list that you have. Okay. Um, so, um, Another thing that uh, I want to show you is subscriptions. Remember when we spoke about that hierarchy that we said we have resources inside resource groups, inside subscriptions? Well, these are my list of subscriptions. I have two. Let's select one. So here I have my subscription. Again, an overview page with information about this particular resource. Another thing for you to keep in mind is here, you're going to always see the same three options at the beginning. Overview, activity logs, which is basically logs, uh, information about what has been going on with that uh, subscription. If you created resources, if you deleted resources, if you change some permissions, all uh, that audit log, you can see it here. Uh, remember, we talk about roles, role-based access control and that. Is here access control. Here you have, for example, you can check what is your access. So view my access. Or if you are an owner, you can assign roles to other users. So all regarding permissions, you always go here. Access control. Okay. Um, again, I don't want to go through all the portal. That would take a lot of time. Um, so uh, I don't know if there's any questions. I see some there on the on the chat. Well, 
what kind of tips or advice can you give to someone who wants to work in this field but is just starting out in this field? Um, the great thing about IT is that a lot of the learning is free and it's on the internet. Okay. Um, so be curious. Um, Go and do the courses that you can have, webinars like this. Um, you have that information, okay? Um, probably 50 years ago, you needed to have someone to teach you or have access to a book. Now everything is on the internet. Be curious and explore all that. Uh, do as many courses you want, read, be curious. Another thing I would say is networking. Um, uh, LinkedIn is a great, source of knowledge um, um, knowing resources and people. OK, uh, if you follow people, for example, I don't know, Microsoft leaders, they sometimes share a blog post or uh, you will find news about new webinars. Um, and who knows, maybe they will post about a job, this job opening and you can apply it, you can Maybe send them information. Hey, what should I need to, to, to apply to this role? So networking, it's a, it's a good thing if you're starting in this field. And be curious about all the, the, the information that you have online. Um, is it possible to register for a free uh, Azure account for practice in studies? Yes, uh, I think. Well, yeah, you shared the link, Biba. And also it's a, an explanation on the first module uh, of the course as well. It explains there. Let me see if there is questions before that. Will this help in getting a job? I have experience in cloud and DevOps. Uh, regarding the content, yeah, uh, so this content definitely you need it. Um, uh, it's good to know for any any job regarding related with Azure. Um, also, Biba, I don't know if you want to add any information. I know this can be added for credits if you're a student. Uh, and Biba also mentioned at the beginning that there are some openings, uh, opportunities after you you finish these these courses, these degrees. Yes, that's correct. So if you uh, choose to register to the Chinese University and say that uh, we we or our partners can contact you and uh, yeah, we can share some if there are any opportunities with you. That's great. Uh, any other questions? If you're shy and you don't want to talk, you can type your questions there in the chat. Uh, do do the micro degrees teach more practical skills than what you would learn for certification exams? Um, if you mean the Azure certification exams, uh, to in my experience, by taking the Azure certifications exams, um, it's good when you read documentation. But to be honest, some of the questions in some of the exams, you need some uh, hands on experience. Some questions are tricky sometimes, uh, so the documentation is not enough. It relies on your experience. Um, if you want some practical hands on experience, there is also some um, resources called, let me take a look. Uh, applied skills type of, uh, they are not exams. Uh, they are more like lab exercises. Let me see if I can open that here with you. Uh, Microsoft Applied Skills, the new credentials to verify in demand technical skills. So this is a little bit different to certification. Certifications of Microsoft, you, it's a multiple choice. This it gives you an exercise and you need to practice. It's free and you can try 
as many times as you want, just one every 24 hours. OK. Um, want to get in a real environment, maybe that's a, 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 good, a good option. I'm going to copy that link there in the chat. Any other question? We still have five more minutes. Okay. Okay, uh, let's wait a couple of seconds more. Maybe someone else has a question. Uh, if not, I don't know, be by if there's anything you would like to add, anything we should say before finishing. No, I think uh, thank you, first of all, Romina, for delivering this session. And uh, uh, as, as we said, I think you were one of the women I could find in the cybersecurity field with excelling. And I think Romina is an example um, for all of us. And I hope to see many of you may be delivering similar sessions to your colleagues in the coming days. So thank you so much, Romina, and thank you all of you for attending. Yeah, definitely will be great to have more women in the uh, in this area uh, and it is possible. Um, so um, hopefully uh, these, you find this insightful. Um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, yes, continue with the the courses because uh, according to what you saw, in, uh, what I see in the material is it, it was it, it has great content. Okay, it, it is very useful. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you.